down the rabbit hole. Alice was very tired of sitting near her sister on the bank. She had nothing to do. She looked into the book that her sister was reading. But it had no pictures and no dialogues in it. What is the use of a book without such things? thought Alice. Shall I get up and pick some daisies to make a daisy chain? But it's so hot. At that moment a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so very strange in that. Nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way. To hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh, I shall be late. At that time it all seemed quite natural. But when the rabbit took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket, and looked at it, and then hurried on. Alice jumped to her feet. A rabbit with a waistcoat pocket. A rabbit with a watch, she thought. And, burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after the rabbit. Just in time to see it rush into a large rabbit hole under the hedge. Another moment Alice followed it, not even thinking about her way out of the hole. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel. And then suddenly Alice found herself falling down a very deep well. The well was very deep, or maybe she was falling very slowly. But she had plenty of time to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. First, she tried to look down and see what was there below. But it was too dark to see anything. Then she looked at the sides of the well, and noticed that there were cupboards and bookshelves. Here and there she saw maps and pictures on the walls. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. There was a label, Orange Marmalade, on it. But to her great disappointment it was empty. I don't want to drop it. It can kill somebody, Alice thought and she managed to put it into one of the cupboards on her way down. Well, thought Alice to herself, after this fall, I won't be afraid of tumbling downstairs. How brave they'll all think me at home. Down, down, down. Will she ever reach the bottom of the well? I must be somewhere near the center of the earth, Alice said. Let me see, that would be 4,000 miles down, I think. This was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge. Because there was no one to listen to her. But still it was good practice to say it over. Yes, that's about the right distance. But then I wonder what latitude or longitude I came to. Alice had no idea what latitude and longitude were but thought they were nice long words to say. She began again. Shall I fall right through the earth? How funny it'll be to meet people that walk with their heads downward. The antipathies, I think. Now she was quite glad there was no one listening. Because it didn't sound like the right word. But I shall have to ask them the name of the country. Please, Mom, is this New Zealand or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she spoke. Can you imagine curtsying when you're falling through the air? And she will think, oh, what an ignorant little girl. No, it'll never do to ask. Down, down, down. There was nothing else to do, so Alice soon began talking again. Dinah'll miss me very much tonight. Dinah was her cat. I hope they'll remember her saucer of milk at tea time. Dinah, my dear. It's a pity you're not here with me. There are no mice in the air, I'm afraid, but maybe there are bats. But the cats eat bats, I wonder. Alice was growing sleepy, and she went on saying to herself sleepily, Do cats eat bats? And sometimes... Do bats eat cats? She couldn't answer any of the questions. So it didn't much matter which way she put it. 
She was falling down and dreaming that she was walking hand in hand with Dinah and saying to her very earnestly, Well, Dinah, tell me the truth. Did you ever eat a bat? When suddenly, thump, thump, she fell down upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves. And that was the end of her fall. It didn't hurt a bit, and Alice jumped on her feet in a moment. She looked up, but it was all dark overhead. Before her was another long passage, and the white rabbit was still in sight, trotting down it. Alice hurried after him, and was just in time to hear it say, as it turned a corner, Oh my ears and whiskers, how late I am! She was close behind it when she turned the corner, but there was no rabbit in sight. She found herself in a long, low hall with lamps hanging from the roof. There were doors all round the hall. Alice tried every door, but they were all locked. She walked sadly to the middle of the hall. How shall I get out of here, she thought. Suddenly she came upon a little three-legged glass table. There was nothing on it except a little golden key. It can open one of the doors, said Alice and hurried to try it. But the locks were too big, or maybe, the key was too little. At any rate, she failed to open any of them. She was going round the hall for the second time when she came upon a low curtain. And behind it was a little door about fifteen inches high. She tried the little golden key in the lock, and to her great delight it fitted. Alice opened the door and found that it led into a small passage. Not much larger than a rat hole. She knelt down and looked along the passage into the loveliest garden you ever saw. She wanted to get out of that dark hall and walk among those bright flowers and those cool fountains so much. But even her head was too big to go through the passage. And what's the use of my head in the garden without my shoulders, anyway? Poor Alice thought. Oh, why can't I shut up like a telescope? I think it's quite possible. Because now I think there are not many things that are really impossible. But I don't know how to begin. And Alice really believed it, after all her adventures. There was no use in waiting near the little door, and she went back to the table. Maybe there is another key, she thought. Or a book of rules for shutting people up like telescopes. But this time she found a little bottle on it. Which certainly was not here before, said Alice. And round the neck of the bottle was a label, with the words, Drink me. It was all very well to say, Drink me. But the wise little Alice was not going to do that in a hurry. No, I'll look at it first. She said, Maybe there is a word, poison, on it. She knew that in the books children got burnt, or wild beasts ate them up. And other unpleasant things usually happened because they failed to remember simple rules. For example, that it is no good to hold a red-hot poker too long, or it will burn you. And it is no good to cut your finger very deeply with a knife, because the finger usually bleeds. And certainly it is no good to drink much from a bottle with the label, poison. Because it can make one sick, sooner or later. But there was no label, poison, on the bottle, and so Alice ventured to taste it. She liked it very much. It had a taste of cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, toffee, and hot buttered toast. She very soon finished it off. What a curious feeling, said Alice. I am shutting up like a telescope. And she really was. Alice was now only ten inches high. And she was happy that she was now the right size for going through the little door into that lovely garden. But first Alice waited for a few minutes to make sure she wasn't going to shrink any further. She felt a little nervous about this. 
or I can go out altogether, like a candle, said Alice to herself. After a while, finding that nothing more happened, she decided to go into the garden, but, alas, when she reached the door, she failed to find the key. She came back to the table and saw the little key still lying on it. But Alice could not possibly reach it, she was too small for it. She could see it quite plainly through the glass. And she did her best to climb up one of the legs of the table, but it was too slippery. Alice grew tired and very unhappy, and the poor girl sat down and cried. Stop it, there's no use in crying like that, said Alice to herself, rather sharply. I advise you to stop it this minute. She usually gave herself very good advice, though she very seldom followed it, and sometimes she scolded herself very severely, and once she even tried to box her own ears. The reason was her cheating in a game of croquet against herself. This curious child was very fond of pretending to be two people. But it's no use now, thought poor Alice to pretend to be two people. There's hardly enough of me to make one respectable person. Soon she noticed a little glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it, and found in it a very small cake, with the words eat me, beautifully marked in currants. I'll eat it, said Alice, it can make me grow larger, and then I will reach the key. Or it can make me grow smaller, and I will creep under the door. So I'll get into the garden any not way, and I don't care how. She ate a little bit, and said anxiously to herself, which way, which way? holding her hand on the top of her head to feel which way it was growing. But, to Alice's great surprise, she remained the same size. This generally happens when one eats a cake. But Alice was expecting nothing but out-of-the-way things to happen. And it seemed quite dull and stupid for life to go on in the common way. So she set to work, and very soon finished off the cake. Вам нравится учить английский с нами? Тогда подпишитесь на наш канал, чтобы не пропустить новые видео. И не забудьте поставить лайк. До новых встреч!